So a patient shows up with horrible shoulder pain, chest pain, left side. EKG is done, shows a little bit of sinus tack, no ST elevation is there compression. Reports numbness of the hand. So what's in my differential? Sometimes you have to see the patient to understand it. So most strokes are not writhing in pain and crying. Usually they're like ignoring the side that's affected, not pointing at it, not lifting it. So if this patient I see is coming in, I can't move my arm, it hurts. And he's clutching his chest and he's clutching his shoulder, something is wrong. What makes me think that this is not a stroke? No facial droop and he's seeking clearly. I have a lift his left leg, normal. I have him lift his arm, can't he says. And then I slowly see him slowly doing this. He, he's acting like he has renal colic. Something is like blocked, obstructing, something, tearing, something is wrong. Now, was he doing too many uh, one-handed push-ups? Maybe, right? But he would tell me, I would ask him this, right? Were you pulling something? Were you lifting something heavy? Did it feel uh, an acute pop or snap? Expose the patient, right? Exposure, exam. History and exam tells you most of the things. To rule out and rule in, right? No deformity. He has oh, such horrible pain. I don't have to touch him and he's writhing in pain. I touch the area that hurts. He, he doesn't push me away. The pain is so, like, he says the pain's inside. Now on the outside, so I've got a document, no discoloration. His arm does feel slightly cool on that side. Right. Other thing I didn't rule out is a PE. So I look, he has a little bit of tachycardia. Tachypnea, a little bit, no hypoxia. Ask him if he's short of breath, he denies it. All right? Lungs are clear. All right? So a little bit of tachycardia, horrible pain. Does he have a PE? Less likely, but you can't have it. And you can have it now with COVID times with something called sick, sepsis-induced coagulopathy. But he's not febrile, he's not hypothermic, it's not a code sepsis. So I'm like, okay, I don't think it's a PE, right? And the way he's manifesting, again, oh, IV him, not on the arm that's affected, this arm. I get a BP on this arm, it's 120 over 40 or no, over 70. Feel on the, for a pulse on the left, no pulse. Does that a stroke cause that? A stroke maybe it can cause that. But, right? And he feels cool and it does feel cool. And he says that the whole arm feels numb. I'm like something is wrong. Something is either, either wrong at the radial artery level. Right? At the radial artery? The brachial? Axillary? That's the subclavian, all right? So try to get an automatic, automated BP does not register on the machine. Try to get a manual BP, right? One of these, and you don't have to run the arm. Old school, right? It's done by a tech. The tech can't get a number. The nurse gets, tries it, doesn't get a number. It confirms something wrong. So I have to figure out what's gonna kill him right away. In your dissection or arterial thrombus or emboli. So make a gamble, get epoch. If you don't have an epoch point of care blood test at the bedside, you can try to send it off. Um, ABG lights or chemistry, blood gas with chemistry will include like a lactate. I may need to know that if he has dead tissue. I may do a CPK to see if there's rhabdo from the lack of blood flow to the arm. Regardless if it's an arterial thrombus or dissection. d dimer you can do that to screen for PE. Some people actually use it to screen for eric dissections. I did give him an IV, some fentanyl. He's a big guy, at least 240, he says. 240 pounds, 240 kilos, 240 pounds. And I'm like, dude, he's writhing in pain and horrible pain. If someone asks, is this a stroke team activation? When you see him move his arm, it's not a stroke, right? Does that make sense? I'm not going to do any head TT. He's not anticoagulant. He's relatively healthy. Other than the fact that it was told to me, and I looked at the chart, he had some type of something wrong inside. 
and he was on anticoagulations for six months and two months was stopped because they never found the, an original cause. This is before COVID times. They did a pro-coagula, uh, pro-coagulable state uh, workup, hypercoagulable workup, uh, state workup, and it was negative by the hematologist, and two months ago it stopped. Now look, he had an, uh, uh, a descending aortic thrombus. No AFib, echo is normal, so what do I do now? So guess what? Very smart resident hooks up an ultrasound, a different probe, a vascular probe, and he starts scanning from the radius up, right? But he only starts scanning the radius up when I take him to the CAT scan and do an aortogram, because he had pathology of the aorta before. CT aortogram, I guess here is CT aortogram chest, and then you do CT uh, angio abdomen, and then I guess you put CT IV contrast pubis, all the way down to the iliacs. And guess what? I saw no proximal aortic dissection, no distal aortic dissection or aneurysm. And I'm like, I'm not a radiologist, but I'm good at looking for bad things. And by the way, people don't like to look at this, but you can look at the CAT scan and the aorta and the angiogram and try to look for a PE. There was no massive PE. I should have probably used an ultrasound to differentiate if he had right heart strain, a large ventri uh, right ventricle. Once in a blue moon, you'll see a weird bowing of the right ventricle into the left on the CAT scan. But I didn't intentionally think it was a PE, so, but I looked at the CAT scan and I didn't see that. So one of my residents, I'll put the shout out on the gram, scan from here all the way up. Imagine this, you see compressible vein, and then you see in, in the, uh, the artery that's not compressible. Fat, juicy artery, bouncy, but not pulsatile. Something is cutting off the blood flow. Goes all the way up, follows it in to the brachial artery, goes all the way halfway up. Luckily at this time, I'd already called my colleagues in vascular. And my colleagues in vascular, the resident covering that night, uh, that morning, realized, dude, I haven't even gotten a Doppler for them because they love to hear sound. But he was convinced, given the fact that the radius was not pulsatile, something was wrong in that arm. All right? I was committed in doing a repeat CAT scan. Big baller move. He already had a contrast load. Am I going to affect his kidneys? His kidneys were just normal flesh, like 1.8. For some reason, it's gone from 1.5 to like 1.9 in my shop. GFR is the other way people are doing it in other shops. Uh, another shop that I work at. So, at Coombs. Um, so I had to do baller moves, right? Either I had the lab and commit to the study, and hopefully the techs get along with me. Like, this is an emergency. It doesn't matter what the cranny is. If it's two or three. But he was going to get a second load. I get a phone call. The radiologist gets paid more than me, tells me there's a, a proximal, uh, well, there's a distal subclavian arterial thrombus. That explains it all. Of course, call a vascular surgeon, they want to see how extensive the thrombus is. is for only in that area, in the shoulder, underneath the clavicle, or all the way down. And that's the part I went back to look, and I'm going to send you videos of what it looked like. Right underneath the right, right where it's about to approach the clavicle, you see the thrombus. And luckily the thrombus was only extending here to the axillary, not down all the way to the radius. We started heparin, it's a clot, so we started at PE, DVT, uh, dose, not AFib dose, not ACS dose, high dose, uh, 18 units per kilo, um, no, 80 units per kilo, and bolus, and then 18 units per, uh, per, uh, per kilo per hour dose. Woo! CAT scan got done, went to the OR, his arm is saved. Um, they didn't have to do uh, fasciotomies because sometimes you get reperfusion uh, injury that the arm gets really really swollen got monitored in the ICU overnight or a step down his arm never got acutely swollen never had it needed a fasciotomy he probably is gonna have to be on anticoagulation for the rest of his life again be careful when people think of numbness it's a stroke look at the patient please examine the patient history and bedside exam and it was luckily I, he had said something. He had said something was wrong in his chest. The nurse had gotten that history, and I corroborated with the 
with his prior hospitalization here. Can't wait for us to have universal access to all EMRs. Because imagine that. Maybe Geneva was a horrible historian and couldn't tell me anything. But this arm is saved. This patient is out of the hospital. Make sense?